Hey, hey, it's me, Talia. Here today with a quick behind the scenes tutorial about mage.space. The thing I love about mage is that there are no monthly credits and you have unlimited fast generations. All the models are saved to the cloud so there's no local install needed and you can even use it on your phone. Mage just recently had a massive update to the platform so let's take a look. Today, I'd like to make a portrait so let's select this preset concept. Here's a nice little prompt I prepared earlier for you. Upper body shot, a beautiful young woman with shoulder length teal hair, joyful expression wearing a leather jacket in a nightclub, vibrant neon lighting. Wow, that was quick. Let's see what everyone else is making in here. There are loads of pre-made apps to choose from with new ones created by the community all the time. It's great for when you need a little inspiration. Okay, how about this? pixel art sunset one. This way you can generate new images with just one click. Hmm, nice. And there are other apps with similar styles to browse too. But how about we move on to create our own image next? A prompt describing all the details you want in the image is the first thing you need. There's also an inbuilt prompt enhance feature which just gives your prompt a bit of improvement. You might also like to play around with the prompt filters. These are great, and there are hundreds to choose from that apply different effects to your image. Equally crucial is the negative prompt, detailing the elements you want to avoid. Always use a negative prompt for better results. Selecting the right AI model for your creation is vital. There are thousands of free models on Civit AI. Uploading models to Mage is as simple as pasting the model's link in the Upload Models section. Another important factor is the number of steps, which determines the time the AI takes to generate the image. Too few steps might result in an incomplete or blurry image, while too many could introduce extra elements like additional fingers, double faces, or an over-processed look. Each model functions differently, so experimenting with different settings is essential. For most SDXL models, try using 15 to 20 steps and a guidance scale of five to eight. Remember to fine tune your prompts, experiment with various models, and adjust the steps to achieve the best possible results. Some other aspects to be aware of include clip skip. Clip stands for contrastive language image pre-training, and I always make sure to have it enabled for better results. Below, you'll find the scheduler drop-down menu offering several options to choose from. Each option represents different mathematical methods the AI uses to construct the image. Fortunately, we don't need to worry about the technicalities. My go-to schedulers are DDPM SD Keras for detailed images, which works quite well with portraits, and Euler A, which can create smoother results, making it ideal for illustrated images. Lastly, DPMM can give a grainy, realistic photo look, which works well for realistic images that aren't too perfect. Experiment with a few schedulers to determine what works best for your desired outcomes. Well, that's a wrap on this basic introduction to Mage Space. I hope you've enjoyed learning about all the cool features and tools available on this platform. Now it's time for you to take what you've learned and start creating your own AI-generated masterpieces. Who knows? You might just create the next viral sensation. Thank you for watching, and happy generating.